work that I do talking out loud for a living, I, I regularly say, you know, I'd like to introduce a person who needs no introduction. But finally, I have someone who I think absolutely needs no introduction. Um, Shirley Nelson is tattooed into the soul of Feroz Care. Um, uh, she is a woman, as we all know, not only of vision, but of practical action and compassion. And in Shirley's life, those three elements are regularly intertwined and always to the benefit of the broader community. It's a great pleasure to ask Shirley Nelson to speak. I had no idea there was going to be so many people here tonight. I thought it was going to be a family sort of occasion. Um, anyway, I'm delighted to see so many people here. Absolutely delighted. Um, and uh, it is with considerable pleasure and immense pride that I stand here this evening. I want to thank Janine and Terry, the Chairman of the Board, for inviting me to speak. It is a great honour for me to have the opportunity to join Ferris Care in acknowledging all those who have contributed to making the company what it is today. When considering this statement, I asked myself, what is Ferris Care today? And who are all of those who have contributed? I think it is a dynamic, innovative, exciting organisation which has grown enormously from its early, humble beginnings. Its stated mission, philosophy and core values have not changed. It is a community-owned, not-for-profit organisation dedicated to delivering quality care and lifestyle support for seniors and their families. It is, in my opinion, and one that is shared by many, many others, a good company. You may think I am biased, but I also think it is a great company, one with enormous further potential. I pose the question, what makes this so? There are so many elements, of course, which make up a great organisation. <clears throat> but I will leave others in the audience this evening to talk about those. I would like to say a few words about what I think is the key to this great company. And what I think is also the answer to the second question I pose. Who are those who have contributed? It is, of course, its people. From its earliest beginnings, it was the people of the community of Byron Bay and its visitors who so generously committed to the project through George Ferris's unique fundraising methods and later personal donations. I should mention that next month, on the 14th of August to be exact, it will be 36 years since a group of people from the community met to assist George Ferris with the fundraising and to formalise approaches to governments to build a nursing home in Byron Bay. I don't intend to dwell on the past this evening, although it is very tempting to do so as it is a great story. The history of Ferris Care is now widely known. Suffice it to say, though, that that early group of eight people were the forerunners of the many volunteers, fundraisers, members, and board members of this company today. What was so different about those early fundraisers? It was their commitment to an old man and his dream. It was also their tenacity and sense of purpose to keep going when the task seemed at times totally impossible and when, quite honestly, it would have been easier to give up. I have wonderful memories of the people involved and the commitment they each had, not only to the fundraising which led to the building and the subsequent opening in 1990 of our first residential village in Byron Bay, 
Many of those early volunteers gave of their all. How wonderful it was to stand on the little bridge overlooking the gardens surrounding the four cottages with the Honourable Peter Staples, Federal Minister of Health and Age Services, when he opened the facility 25 years ago. We were fortunate then to appoint an administrator, Sue Beck, who ably, with a tiny staff, created a home for the residents in a village environment. The village, designed by Christine Vadaz, a local architect who I'm delighted to see here this evening, was unique in its design and it was the first of its kind in the state. Those early beginnings cemented the reputation of Ferris Care as a caring, committed organisation to its residents and their families. Volunteers, as in earlier days, continued to play an important role. The formation of the Friends of Ferris, a wonderful group of people ably led by Nola Lake, a name which must go down in Ferris history, saw their role not only in fundraising but also assisting the staff and the residents in a variety of ways. It was in the mid-90s that a decision was made to build the nursing home in Bangalore and to extend our services to people in the community through the attainment of care packages. This expansion of services meant changes in our management team was necessary. Perhaps in my mind, the penultimate decision was made to appoint a Chief Executive Officer. That appointee was Janine Buckley wonderful Janine Buckley, who continues to steer this company forward. Fifteen years later, I find her enthusiasm, leadership and commitment to this company infectious and daunting. Janine and her staff have taken over the mantle of those early volunteers. Now I've lost my place. During my long professional career, I have never experienced the shared culture, the enthusiasm and leadership that is palpable in this company. For Janine and her management team, people are very important. Education is important. The Seven Star Programme initiated by Ferris Care for its staff is a resounding success. Staff are motivated, encouraged and respected. They are recognised and rewarded for a job well done. There is the same sense of purpose and commitment to what they are doing as there was in those early volunteers. The quality programmes and statutory audits by outside examiners continually praise our care policies and standards. Only four or so weeks ago, Byron Bay Village was surveyed for accreditation and received the highest marks possible. The comments from the auditors in their final report were glowing in their praise of the staff and management systems. They reported, and I quote, they could not find any opportunities for improvement, and what a pleasure it was to come to the home and see Ferris Care in action. In other areas across the organisation, we continue to win recognition for best practice in technology, management and community care, as well as individual awards for innovation and excellence in management. My observations as a board member and as chairman of the board was that the staff were totally committed to the fairest way of doing things. This culture is pervasive across this whole company. My other observation over a long period of time has been the personal growth of, in particular, long-time members of the senior management team. They have grown with the growth of the company, tackling new challenges and experiences as they occur. This with increasing frequency as the company has grown and expanded. At the annual staff function, recognition and awards are made to the staff. 
volunteers over the years and still today have played an important role in the growth and success of the company. Their role is acknowledged and recognised. It would be remiss of me at this juncture not to mention the very many able members of the board. They are volunteers who have provided governance, support and leadership. Their growth is a story in its own right. One I have witnessed from our early struggles to the successful governance team we have in place today. In recent times, in order to spread the message, get bold, not old, Ferris Care has become a major sponsor of the Byron Bay Writers Festival. In the last two years, we have seen Janine and her team encouraging the message that Ferris Care celebrates ageing. <clears throat> From a board member and past chairman's perspective, it has been an exhilarating, rewarding journey. One I have shared with some remarkable people. I think it very appropriate that at this 25th anniversary, we acknowledge all those who have contributed. It has been said that it is not about him or her. Indeed, it is not. It is about all involved in making Ferris Clare what it is today. So, have I answered the questions I posed at the beginning of my talk? What is a good company, a great company, it is not returns, profit, surplus. It is our people. Those who govern us, manage, and most importantly, provide the care and quality practices to our ever-increasing client base. Care and services that are delivered via the Byron model, a unique model of care developed by our staff and delivered with empathy and compassion. Our rewards are the positive feedback we receive from our satisfied clients. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> we may have changed the wording over the years, but the intent of our mission, core values and philosophy are still as important today as they ever were. I stand here this evening proudly acknowledging all who have been connected to Ferris Care over many long years and all who work today in whatever capacity. The future is yours. The past was mine, and I have wonderful memories. Thank you very much. The way forward for Feroz, uh, as Shirley has so eloquently outlined, regularly involved volunteers coming together combining their skills and their vision and their energy to produce an outcome. But sometimes it's also very important that that energy can be directed, that those skills can be focused and that the way forward can be mapped out so that corporate growth and the meeting of key goals of caring for clients can be achieved. Over the life of Ferros, the person who has brought a wealth of knowledge about non-profit organisations and how to help them grow and achieve their goals is Michael Goldsworthy. And Michael is here tonight, and it's a pleasure to also ask him to speak. Michael Goldsworthy. I'm not really sure where to start, actually. I've written a formal speech. It covers a lot of things. I could tell you about strategy at the nudist camp. Now, that's strategy. I could tell you about a lady in a rowboat in front of a pub who was most encouraging of my strategies. But perhaps I'd better return to a more formal approach for a short while before I tell you some stories. Isn't it interesting when you think about it? One man, one bell, and one little box. That's where it all started. And as we heard from Shirley, from that rose a number of people, some eight people, who worked on a vision and a dream. And I suppose, really, when you think about it, that's an amazing, truly amazing start for an amazing organisation. 
Before I move forward onto some of the more strategic journey that Ferris has undertaken, let me just return back for one minute to that man, the bell and the box. In fact, what a great story, a great video, or even a case study could be made of this journey. A journey that is unquestionably by any measure, countless, in fact, countless international, national, state, regional, even local awards, tenders, successfully attest to two great things about Ferris. Its ability to operate as Australia's preeminent residential aged care and home care and adult health organisation. That is truly an amazing journey. And one, in fact, now that's translating slowly and carefully into becoming an emerging world leader. Yes, a world leader as they move into aged care and allied health internationally. One can imagine George pounding the pavements of Byron, his small bell ringing out. In fact, what it was really doing was ringing out from his heart, a heartfelt passion for his dream, a place to care for family members and for friends. And his little wooden box, a self-made item, being put before locals and tourists alike seeking a donation. Think of all that money that he must have collected in that little box and think of the millions now that are in the bank accounts. Wow, what a dream and what a journey. In essence, his small bell uh, represented the heart of Ferris as it sung out its song. And the box, really, you could think about as the strategic side of things, the business side of things, and the management and leadership. For any non-profit, or I call them community business, to really be successful, there's always got to be a challenge. There's always got to be a way forward. And when you think about this organisation, from its very beginnings, what is, uh, what is undertaken has always been with great flair and great panache. That's definitely Ferris, there's no question of that. And as all of us can attest, life is certainly a big journey with many adventures. And there's been a lot of adventures and journeys in Ferris. And I must say, I've been extremely privileged to be part of Ferris's journey. A small part, but I suppose at one level, an important part. In recent years, I've reflected on this journey of non-profits. If I can indulge for one moment, having worked for over now 6,000 and undertaken some 253 amalgamations and mergers, you start to see a bit of a picture. And when you look at aged care, you can start saying, gosh, where are all those organisations in Australia and how are they travelling? And why has Ferris, why has Ferris grown from what it was to where it is today, let alone where it's going? It's interesting to reflect upon those thoughts. When you start thinking about the essence of Ferris and why in fact it has grown, you might talk about the ability to dream and envision. You might talk about their ability to be creative and innovative. Or you might talk about their ability to be entrepreneurial and resourceful. But most of all, as surely as more than ever can be spoken about, it's been about the people. The people who have taken that journey with Ferris at every level of the organisation and also the people surrounding the organisation. They've had a real passion for supporting seniors to live their best life. Here's a few quick facts and figures sprinkled over the story or two as I could progress. 25 years of financial success. Although there's been some tough years, they've never actually made a loss. They did get down to some $2,000 at one point in time. And I might do recall our first strategy session. There was Stuart Garrett. Where is Stuart? He must be there somewhere in the crowd. He had his teapot on his head. A teapot, tea cosy, can you imagine that? And there was Nick and a few others, all dressed up, playing charades. But we had to ask the hard question. Were we in fact going to continue? At one point in time, we asked the question, should we even close the place? Seriously, things were getting tough. We could foresee the future and were really concerned about how we were gonna go forward. But a new way was found. Jeannie and her team, got 25 packages and off they went. And did they grow and go? And then there was Keith. Keith was realistic as a chairman. He commissioned an independent review and said, gosh, we've got to go forward. We've got to find a new way. And that new way really brought new strategy and great development. From a buyer and centric approach, I remember the very days, there was much intensity and passion, passion around um, Ferris, 
much intensity. But to even go regional was a major debate. And here we are now, national, going international. What a leap of faith, what a journey. From a, just one million to 60 million today, from one local government area to 60 local government areas, from one town in New South Wales, now across New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, and even Tasmania, and talk of even going to Macquarie Island. I'm not sure how many people visit there, but not to worry. They'll claim the land anyway. Um, from one residential facility to three. And yes, there's been the great debate, should we be in resi or should we out, be out of resi? Or should we only be home care or allied health? But gosh, those journeys have brought rigour and thinking and clear decisions and most importantly, practical and realistic strategy. From a few competitors, in fact, not many competitors, to a significant number of competitors. In the game we operate now, there's some 5,000 competitors in Australia. Gosh, and they're all looking to grow and all looking to go. Let's have a quick think about some of the great stories though in Ferris. One day, as I briefly mentioned, we had planned a strategy workshop. And as usual, I'd have to arrange Mrs. Jeannie, because she always made good choices in venues, in fact, excellent choices in venues, and had great food and great events. And off we went, and we went down to a little place, a little sort of shack type place, that was on a sand dune. And it had beautiful glass windows. And I said, how magnificent this place was. It was absolutely spectacular, trying to think and plan through all these things. And as I stood up and looked out the window, trying to get inspiration, I was more than inspired when I saw a lady with 44 D cups <laughs> just lying there quite below me. And I realised suddenly we are at a nude speech. <laughs> and that was one thing. But more importantly, when Jeannie picked me up, she knew that I loved prawns, absolutely loved prawns. So we rushed from the airport straight to the fish and chip shop, or fish shop, whatever it was. And we bought 10 kilograms of prawns, magic prawns, and we even nibbled a few in the car on the way. And Jeannie popped the box in the back, and she was so happy that we were going to have the prawns for the event. But grief befell us. You wouldn't believe it. It was a hot day, a stinking hot day, one of those Byron days of great humidity, and there was a hole in the box, and the prawn juice leaked into a brand new car, the magnificent carpet. So we opened the doors, and we left the car open all day to get the smell away, and I later talked to Jeannie, how did it go? She said, I sold the car for the same amount of money I bought it for a week later. I could go on with many stories, but most importantly, in coming towards some conclusion, there is no doubt, when you really start thinking about Ferris, they certainly are striving toward being a global pioneer in health, a global pioneer in health, in wellness and lifestyle, and they've certainly started their journey of showcasing innovation, best practice, quality and technology. It's this vision that propels them forward and it'll be interesting to see who's here for the 50th. Hands up if you're going to be here for the 50th. Yeah. Who's going to be here for the 75th? <laughs> and who's going to be here for the 100th celebration? Yeah. Hey. Hey. Technology will win through. Have faith. In closing, perhaps not a footnote or even not a conclusion, but a real recognition that great leaders, inspiring leaders, and leaders with entrepreneurship and vision are few and far between. But when Keith walked, Keith Castle walked, took his morning walk as he went along the beach and he found that little bottle and uncorked it and out popped the genie, we know what really happened. Thank you. The person who we've been speaking about, or Michael has been speaking about, of course, is Janine Buckley. Now, as you're no doubt well aware, Tonight is a celebration of a huge team of people, their efforts and the results of those efforts. But efforts can be disparate and poorly organised and have to be constantly marshalled and corralled. How you do that marks you as a leader. If you can bring your staff with respect, through respect, you can achieve goals that seemingly were beyond the small group of people who initiated them. And that's what Janine Buckley has done. Through her stewardship, Ferris has grown, it has prospered, but it has never lost the sense of its key undertaking 
to extend care and compassion. Please make her welcome the CEO of Ferris Care, Janine Buckley. It's a bit unusual for me to have notes, but I've just got a lot of important things to say, so I'm going to try and keep to task tonight. And was that really a catering manager? <laughs> I'm just not sure. No, I didn't think he was. He was gorgeous. Um, just a little bit of history. I, I started with Ferris in December 2000, in the year 2000, which um, was the 10th year of operation of what was then called George Ferris Memorial Hostel Committee Incorporated. I came on board to take over the reins of Sue Beck, who was the, the original CEO, and worked extremely hard to establish both Byron and Bengalo villages, and held a very strong commitment to customer service and the rights of residents, and was very highly regarded in the aged care industry. Like Sue and the board and the original fundraising committee and the Friends of Ferris and George Ferris himself, this hard work and commitment and our mission, to our mission has never stopped for a moment in the last 25 years. For me, there's not a day that I don't think about the special people in my life and there's not a day in the last 15 years that I have not thought about Ferris. It's been a significant part of my life and my families and I know also a significant part of the life of many of my staff and um, managers and volunteers. For the first few years of Ferris, um, we were dedicated to improving its viability. It was a small organisation and it needed to grow and we needed to put staffing structures in place and new service models just to make sure that we were going to be sustainable and be able to be here celebrating um, this very day. And I didn't do this alone. Behind the scenes were the true masterminds. I don't know if I'm going to get through this, but anyway, um, the hard workers and the quiet achievers who were my partners in crime, who made it happen. Uh, Gabriel Taylor and Robin Schneider. I can't see them, but I can't thank them enough um, for their commitment and dedication and their wise counsel for the last 15 years for me. Um, and, I, and there's been, I guess my partners in crime have grown over these years. My senior team and contractors and consultants and specialists, many people who are here tonight, Architects, our legal counsel, marketers, bankers, auditors, technology consultants, risk strategy, peak bodies, universities, you name it. All of you have played a significant role in supporting the growth and the development and the success of Ferris Care. When I reflect on the last 15 years, you know, we've had our up and downs, but thankfully our downs I think I can count on, my, on one hand. And then, and Gita has been, we've been very fortunate to have many, many ups. And when I was talking to our senior staff about their most significant memories, we shared many, many funny moments that represent the sense of fun and spirit of Ferris Care. Ones I don't think I can share with you at this formal occasion, <laughs> but if you are curious, I'd, um, I think I would grab a moment with the likes of Chris Shabella or Keith Doherty or Sarah or Robin, and I'm sure that they can share with you many in stories about uh, board plays, baby gorillas, pirates, ill chickens, infection control outbreaks, just to name a few. But more seriously, I just want to spend a couple of moments just to share with you some of the most significant memories that my senior team have talked to me about. For Sarah Marciano, um, the day we accepted the first resident pet, Bubaloo, at Ferris Village, Bengalo, in 2006, this was significant. Um, it, it started a very big change in the service and the culture of our care in our villages. With a greater focus and understanding of what residents valued in their life and the importance in their continued independence and the control that they wanted. And to make sure their lives were more spontaneous and full of purpose and meaning. For Robin Schneider and Joe Cook, um, it was working in the stench of the onions every Monday morning. <laughs> When we opened our first office, I think Peter Powell might remember this, our first office um, at, um, outside of the Byron Shire, and it was in a room attached to a canteen at the Pottsville Neighbourhood Centre that cooked the barbecue every Sunday for the local markets. <laughs> How things have changed. Now their Monday mornings is walking into Ferris Care's national headquarters, uh, high-tech offices, over two floors, over 100 staff in the corporate centre in Coolangatta, and every day reflecting on what a wonderful monster we've created. For Gabriel Taylor, um, she said her most memorable moment was walking on stage in front of 10,000 people in Washington in 2011 when Ferris Care won the International Award of Excellence in Ageing Services. 
for our development of our community gateway, which has grabbed the interest of not only Australia but international interest and has been the model that's enabled us to mobilise quickly with opportunities and also has been the backbone, backbone of our growth. For Matt Grant and Jenny Marsh, it was in 2013, we won the largest allocation nationally in the aged care approvals round that saw us grow down into Sydney, New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. And this year, we're one of 13 organisations nationally contracted to roll out what's called the new regional assessment service nationally, which went live two days ago. This new service potentially sees Ferris Care touch the lives of over 45,000 seniors per annum next year. For Glenn, our CIO, Glenn, he said it's never been a job where he wakes up every morning and cannot wait to get to work. The sheer appetite this organisation has for technology in so many ways, not only in business operations, but in the use of technology to support our staff and the delivery of care and the support of seniors in their homes. His teams get to implement technologies that some of the top 100 companies in Australia would be envious of. For Kate and Karen Foster, the diversity of projects and the emphasis Ferris Care has on inclusion and supporting seniors from any and every walk of life and allow people to be who they are. Some fantastic outcomes we've achieved with seniors who have participated in our wellness programs, enabling them to live life to the fullest, and our commitment to the development of our staff and volunteers and a culture that never loses sight of why we're here and what is important to us regardless of our size or our growth. And for Lisa, our Director of Marketing, our newest senior member, walking into an organisation that won three national awards or picked up three national awards in three months for our technology and culture and innovative projects and to be overloaded and overwhelmed with the enormous amount of in initiatives around celebrating ageing and seniors and many, many rich stories about staff and residents and clients and projects. And for me, to watch an organisation grow, uh, not just in income or geography wise, but to watch how the culture has grown, how the staff have developed into leaders, and to watch how excited staff are on new projects and new initiatives and just how confident they've become. And to hear how people say that they feel the care and the vibrancy of our villages when they walk into them, and they feel they've experienced, they experience the culture of our staff with just one interaction with them or a very small time in our organisation. I have no doubt that our ability to continue to dream, to work hard and to, and to continue to create special um, opportunities for seniors is well within our company's DNA. And although we're here to celebrate and reflect on, our, on the last 25 years, I know looking forward that the next 25 years is going to be an enormous ride for everybody who's involved. But all of this did not, or did not and cannot be achieved without the overarching leadership of our Board of Directors. To our past and present Directors, and many of you are in the room here tonight, thank you for your generosity of time and support you've provided to not only myself but the senior team and our staff, allowing us to chase our dreams, our shared dreams, your endorsement in giving us the scope through our strategy, the resources through our operational capital plans and allowing us to take risks and embark on new projects and remove any barriers to innovation and trusting the senior team and our staff to create something quite special in aged care. Thank you everyone and um, happy 25 years.